Okay, so before we begin the tutorial, I want just everybody to get this file, which is on Jean-Michel's uh, site. So for you who are not very familiar with the Linux command, so you create a directory for, for the lab. You go into the directory, you do wget, and the uh, HTTP address is http comma slash slash gmfried, like Jean-Michel Fried, dot org, and the name of the file is oot underscore lab underscore files dot tar. Then you uh, extract the file with tar xvf, the name of the file. So this will set some, some files on your virtual machine, and then we can start the, uh, the tutorial itself. So, so I've given you some, some text. I will first do a, a presentation of, of uh, what I will do and, some, uh, and present you some slide about the, the way uh, New Radio organize uh, its uh, file. But I want just that to be done before. <coughs> so we wait for five minutes for that to be done. I guess everybody has, the, um, has installed the file. So I will talk for a little while, like 15 minutes. And um, OK, so let's meet that. They are, they are solving the problem for, uh, for one machine. But I guess everybody has installed the file on the virtual machine, OK? So. Um, so this lab is about writing out of three blocks. Out of three blocks mean blocks that you uh, write yourself in C++. It's nothing brand new. It's something It's directly inspired from the uh, GNU Radio tutorial, which you can find online. Um, it's very basic tutorial, but what happens is that uh, often people have never tried that, so it might take some time to understand all the commands and so on. So just before starting, just let me present the, the team. So I'm Tanguy Risset. I work with Leo that you've seen and, uh, and Mathieu in Lyon. So we started this, uh, well, the whole story started 10 years ago when we created this uh, Cortec Lab uh, platform, which was a dedicated um, research platform for uh, software-defined radio. So by the way, Cortec Lab is still uh, living. It's, it's a platform that you can access from anywhere in the world where you can con connect on 20 USRPs, program them with GNU Radio, and then do some experiment in a shielded room and so on. So if you need information about that, we can, we can help. And at that time, Leo came in Lyon and said, well, we have to use USRP and we have to use GNU Radio. So we started GNU Radio 10 years ago. And then I, I'm teaching in a telecommunication department. And then three or four years later, we decided to, to teach new radio to the students. So the idea of this tutorial here, it's not necessarily for um, developers that want to have very efficient blocks on, on their uh, new radio implementation, because I will, not, uh, I will not go through all the uh, optimization that you can do to have a very efficient block. The idea is more um, to, have, uh, to understand the whole feature of building a block, which is very useful when you want to teach students how to program GNU Radio. Because students today, they, they, they are familiar with uh, computer science. M many of them use Linux. And many of them don't see the, the relation between the theoretical uh, formula that you can have on signal processing and the real uh, implementation on the machine because it's dedicated uh, chips that they use. And here you can have them touching the, the real thing like the modulation and then uh, synchronization and so on. So, so the idea of this tutorial is more to understand and to be able to debug when something is wrong, uh, how to do your own block, how to do your own signal processing block. Okay? So, um, so I already said you should not work as sudo. You should not work as root. We have managed to install the uh, uh, configuration file on the virtual machine that, uh, that, that, that allows you to be a user and, and install the, the thing. Uh, so by the way, if you are working on your machine, uh, let me just show you something. Um,
So this is the, 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 the topic, the, 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 the file that you have. So here, sorry. Here you have the configuration, the Linux configuration that you need to install on your own machine. Uh, it's on the, 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 the text that you have. Uh, basically, you just indicate that all the files that you will generate will be installed in the local directory, dot local di directory, which is in your home. Okay, so that way GNU Radio will not write into uh, slash USR slash blah blah blah, and you can work as a user. So, so if I come back to, so I'm assisted by um, Mathieu and Cyril, who are from New. So please uh, ask them if you, if you have any problem during uh, this uh, tutorial. You have the text. Um, so if you want to start right now, I suggest you would start with uh, uh, section four because the, the, all the beginning is very uh, dependent on the, uh, so basically, uh, so yes. No, section three, section three is the beginning of the tutorial. What I will do now is I will explain very briefly some concept that were uh, presented yesterday by, uh, by Marcus uh, about the uh, way the blocks uh, are working in GNU Radio, okay? Um, I have this slide which are present on the conference uh, site, on the tutorial uh, of the GNU Radio, uh, GNU Radio Days uh, site. I will not go through all these slides. So these are the slides that I show to my students um, it's basically a resume of, of what, what is needed when you want to program a, a block, new block from, from, from scratch. Uh, I will not go through all of them because it's quite long. I will just basically insist on the behavior of a block, how a block uh, is working. Um, and, and just a few slides before, just to make sure that everybody is agree on the, so these are, that I, I will skip. So, just to make sure that everybody is aware that uh, GNU Radio has several languages. So you have files in C++, you have files in Python, and you have the scheduler uh, to which you, you don't have access, but which is uh, at the kernel of GNU Radio. Um, and basically, the file that we, the, the blocks that we want to write are in C++, but you can write blocks in Python too but uh, it's, it's uh, probably uh, better to, to do it in C++. And usually P Python is used to, uh, inter to, to connect the block between them, okay? So I, I guess, I hope everybody is aware of that. So this is a code of one block. So basically, when you have a GNU radio um, flow graph like that, so these things here, this is a graphical interface to GNU radio, okay, GNU radio companion, you are not, using that mandatory. So many people are developing usage just Python scripts, okay? And basically, GNU Radio Companion is generating a Python script. So just uh, to make sure that everybody's aware of that, this blocks, this graphical interface is, is using uh, uh, XML. And for instance, he, here is a code of the, the XML corresponding to the uh, um, Python, to the previous, uh, uh, gra flow graph. So XML is not very complicated. It's just a way to, to express that uh, this block are connected uh, in between. And then inside the block, you have the name of the block which are used. And uh, this is what we will do. We will write these blocks and we will see how to provide a, an XML interface so that this block can be seen into uh, GNU Radio Companion. Okay, so um, so all that is a little bit too early to talk about that. Okay, the first thing is um, to understand that there is a tool provided by GNU Radio, which is called GRMod tool, which will help you in writing new module. If you do it by hand, it will be a nightmare because there is a lot of files that are generated. So um, when you create a block, it has to be in a module, okay? GNU Radio is organized in module which has blocks. So the first thing is to create a new module. And when you do that, there is a bunch of, uh, of, of directory which are created. Each module is organized in the same way. You can go and, and look at the source code of GNU Radio. You will see that every module has this kind of uh, directory inside. So the, the C++ code is in the lib directory. 
the Python contains some test Python file that we will use, um, and, and the uh, XML is, is usually in GRC. So GRMod tool basically will create the module file hierarchy, which are this directory. Then we'll go in this directory and create a block, still with the GRMod tool tool. And then we will edit, of course, it, we have some, at some point to edit the, the block to, to, to do it uh, what we want. And we'll edit the C++ file, and I will show you how to debug this file with the, the, the tools that are provided by GNU Radio. So this, um, so this is basically what you will do. In this example, we create a new module, which is called Arit. And then, uh, so GRMod tool, new mod Arit. It creates a gr-arid directory where you have this, uh, this uh, file and directory. And, and here is a, a way with tree. So you can see, for instance, here I have uh, created a um, arid times two um, block. So sorry, I, I skipped a little. So the first command was gr-mod tool new mode arid. And in the arid directory, I had executed this command, gmod tool add minus t general times two. So it means I created a block called times two of type general. And I've asked that it was a C++, C++ block. So there is a question asking, is it C++ or Python? You, you answer C++, CPP. And then you just uh, type uh, carriage return and, and, and that works. So when you do that, you have in the lib directory the file, um, where is it, uh, times to imp.cc, times to imp.h, which are the files that you will edit to have the, your block working, okay? So this is uh, commented in the, uh, in, in the text. So what I want to talk now about is the way uh, blocks are working. So. So you remember yesterday, yeah. So, uh, no, no, but you, 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 you will, you will follow the paper. It's really explained step by step in the paper. But just uh, before that, I want you to understand how the blocks are working. So let's. So this is a GNU Radio block, okay, which takes two input stream and two output stream. So you have understood that there is a, a sort of FIFO here, which contains the samples that will be read by the block and that will be write by the block. So every GNU Radio block has this, but of course in a parameterized way. So the idea is that in GNU Radio blocks, there are several kinds of blocks. So there are general blocks and sync block. We'll only talk about general blocks today. And all this block inherits from a class which is called GR blocks and which has the following method. So by the way, it's C++, but if you know C, it should, it should be enough because you don't really need some uh, knowledge about C++. Everything is already written for you. So, uh, so the, the, method impo the important methods are set history, forecast, general work, and consume. So Let's talk first about general works. So um, Mar Marcus yesterday talked about this method. So the general works is a method that every block has, and it, which is a method which is executed when the block is called once. Okay, and it has always the same input and un parameter. It has four parameters, which are which is n b n output items, a vector of int which is n input items and uh, two vector, uh, which are the uh, streams that are inputs or outputs to the, to the block. So I will come back on that. Um, there is this famous forecast method that um, uh, Marcus uh, talked yesterday. The forecast method indicates to the scheduler how many input items you consume to produce an output item, okay? So if you, for instance, if you Usually you do a block where for each output item, you read one output item. For instance, if you do the sum of these two, you get 
So basically, the forecast method will indicate that you do read one output item, one input item for one output item. But you have to indicate that to GNU Radio. And then consume, I mean, reading the input item on the input file does not consume them, OK? Some data flow language do that. You can read only once. But here, no, you can read as many times as you want. And then when you want to consume them, you call the consume function. When you have called the consume function, the, it, the, the sample is not uh, accessible anymore. OK? Consume, it's like destroying the item, OK? So if we look a little bit closer uh, to these arguments, uh, so let me switch to, to this slide, which is, um, OK. So this is the same drawing, OK? You have the stream. And here, I'm sorry, it's a little bit small, but what I wrote here is input items of 0, 0. So input items, input item is this um, argument of the work function. So, so you see that it's a vector of pointer to element of the input streams. So why it's a vector? Because we can have several input streams, OK? And why it's a pointer? Because it's a pointer on the first element of the input stream. Okay, so this is why we access it with this syntax: input item of zero zero. It is the first element of the first input stream. Input item of one zero is the first element of the second stream. Input item of of zero one is the second element of the first input stream. Is that OK for everybody? Same thing for the output. Here I have only one output uh, stream. So output item of 0, 0 is the first output uh, item. Output item of 0, 1 is the second output item, and so on. So this is quite important to understand, because you will have access to the input and output with this uh, array here. So here, I, I wrote a simple example, because we have seen what is input item and output item. Now there are two other variables, which are n output item and n input item. So n output item is, a, is an integer. And n output item, basically here I put it, I put a 1, but basically you, don't, you never access to this variable. This variable is set up by GNU Radio Scheduler. But let's say for, for the moment it's one. It means that we produce one output item. The n input item will indicate on each stream how many items you consume to produce one output item. OK? So here I have n input item of 0 equals 4. So it means I will consume 4 item here. In n input item of 1 equals 2. I will consume 2. And I will produce one output item here. So if you are in this configuration and you execute once the work function, it means that you will go from this state to this state. Of course, you have consumed the four items and the two items. And basically, the four items have disappeared. Now, input item of 0, 0 is pointing on A5. Input item of 1, 0 is here. And you don't have access anymore to this uh, location. But of course, it's not lost. It's, it's transmitted to the next block, of course. So in, in that simple case, stupid case, let's say for this sample, I want to sum all these six samples, this four sample and these two sample. Okay? So how do I do that? At some point, I have to write some C code. And what I do is I just accumulate, I just accumulate in, in directly in the output item uh, w that I want to write. I just accumulate the four input item from, from the first uh, input stream and the two input attempt from the second input stream. Okay, so this is very simple code. Please do not do copy and temporary file and so on and temporary uh, uh, variable because uh, this is where the execution time is, is, is lost. If you do a copy of each input item to the local variable and then copy back to the output stream, then your, your function will be much less efficient than if you directly copy to the to the output. OK. So this is what you will write if you want to produce one sample as output of the block. 
But GNU Radio does not work like that. GNU Radio will systematically produce a chunk of output. And this chunk of output, this number of output, is the famous n output items. So GNU Radio Scheduler invokes the work function for computing a chunk of output. Basically, you have to do that for n output items times. Okay? So if you are to produce one sample here, you will, you will, lose, you will use a certain number of input. If you are to produce an output item sample, an output item samples, you have to repeat the, the, the processing for n output item times. So basically, you put a loop for n output item times the same process. It's at the end of the work function. And yes, and, and it's the same thing. You consume n output item times the number of. Uh, so this is the code that you will write in, in, in practice. So this is the same loop inside, except that, of course, I've indexed the, uh, the, the right sample that I want to access, because you have as external loop the loop on the output item that you produce. OK? Yeah. So basically, in GNU Radio, you have most of the time you have one output for one input. If you have subsampling or oversampling, these are special blocks, and usually you use a special type of uh, of, uh, of blocks, which I will not explain today. But uh, yeah, if if you have uh, basically, uh, it means that you uh, well, you have to uh, use another type of blocks. For the moment, we use only blocks that are so sync block have one output for one input. So most of the block are sync block, but you have also decimation and our sampling block, which are another thing. But here we'll stay in that. So if everybody understands this code, I think everybody should understand this one too, which is the usual way we, we write the code in in, uh, in new radio. So you basically have an alias, you put a pointer on on the on each input stream and a pointer on the output stream and you use this uh, increment uh, notation to, to consume the items or to, to use the items. Uh, this is exactly the same code, it's just uh, smaller to write and see C like uh, function. But is this code faster than the previous? No, no, no. I don't think so. I, I don't think so with current compiler. <laughs> when it was invented, invented a uh, long time ago, maybe, but uh, today I don't think so. Um, OK, so we talked about the forecast function. You remember, forecast is supposed to say, how many input items do I need to produce a given number of n input items? And here again, we, we have a parameter, which is n output items, so how many so this is a stupid example because it does not go with my previous slide. In my previous slide, I needed four uh, input items to produce one output item. So this code is valid if you need to produce, to consume one output item, input item to, to, to create one output item, OK? In, the in my previous example, I should have written n input items required equals four times and I would put it in because I consume four input items for on the first and on the second it's two. Okay, so here on the on the lab you will only have to do that because we we do a block which uh, raises a signal at the square, and then it's just one sample, produce one sample. So we will we will see how to do that, a, a block that produce one sample from one sample. So just to mention something which is very important is that sometimes. <coughs> Uh, sometimes, sorry, so this is a complete, uh, sometimes we need more than that. We need to use the current sample and the, the, the past sample. If you do a FIR filter, for instance, you, you use n samples, but this n is shifted and you keep n minus one of them and you use the, the, the following one. So this mechanism is implemented, is implemented in GNU Radio as history, they call that history. 
And basically, if you use a function set history to a given number, let's say 4, it means that you will use 4 sample to produce 1 sample, but you will not consume this 4 sample, you will just consume 1 sample. Okay, and you will shift the, this window. Uh, so basically, I, I don't think we'll have time to experiment that in, in the lab today, but you have it, the, the code in, in the lab, and you have this slide. Uh, what the way GNU Radio works is that if you put uh, set history to 4, then the input item of 0, 0 points on the first sample available, which is actually a past sample, uh, a sample from the past. The current sample is here, current item. The current item produces this output, and this items are from the past and these are from the future okay so it's quite it's not very um, um, I mean for me it's it's easier to understand with this formula that that I have a minus when I go in the past and a plus when I go in the future so what we usually do is that we change we change the pointer we add the history which is a, a class of the, uh, of, the, of the method. And then it means that the pointer is pointing to the current sample, and this is the past, and this is the future, and you can have access with a minus. Okay? So it's just, I want, just wanted to, to show you that. Um, because if you, you have to be very careful the first time you use the history, uh, and, and you will have some way to debug your, uh, your block with what we, saw we see today. Okay? Um, okay, so I think we have all what we need. Uh, can, you, can you access um, outside of the array? There's no protection. Uh, no, there's no protection. Uh, no, it's like C code, yeah. yeah. It's, it's like C code. Yeah. Yeah, but. but Usually the access are not very difficult. You have basically you access the sample and then you. you. Uh, so w you have to be careful not to forget uh, things like the, the the forecast function. So if you forget to do that, uh, GNU Radio will do nothing. It will it will loop infinitely without doing nothing. So this is kind of uh, bugs that uh, we had uh, <laughs> this morning. Um, so I think that now everybody can start the uh, the lab. Um, let me just. Uh, you have to create this directory. So if you are not familiar with Linux, please ask us. It's not a problem. But you will see that, and that might be a problem for students to to build new blocks. You have to be familiar with Linux. Or, I mean, you have to do it in Linux because it, it's, it's much more complicated on Windows. So here we will create a local directory which is called dot .loc dot dot .local, where all the GNU radio files will be uh, installed there. Okay. So you have to do that, and then you have to create a directory uh, where you will work because you will have will generate some file, some source file, and the basically the produce file will be put there by GNU Radio. And the first thing that you will do once you have um, once you have created this directory is basically to create a module which we call tutorial, and then follow the, the instruction. Compilation errors. Okay, so. You you have not did you edit the um, uh, square imp dot cc? No. So you have to do that because it's, it's, they generate this code, okay. but they don't know how many inputs you want ah, to your okay. code. So okay. you have to. So it it should be written in the tutorial. Okay. So you have okay. to edit this file. Everywhere where there is the greater and lower, you you replace by. Okay. Uh, yeah. I just think uh, this is just a comment. I understand it, but like. Okay. Doesn't uh, Python have like higher order functions? Because this is just an accumulator or a fold. And yeah. Is there not a way of just saying what I understand is that the way young people are programming today is that they use Python library to do very complex things. And the way we used to program 
is we do things in C to be very close to the machine to control exactly the uh, uh, the efficiency of the implementation. So that's just my opinion. Huh? And and I think that in the case of GNU Radio, they want to keep this uh, aspect. Especially after that, they will use the Volk library, which will uh, have efficient implementation of vector uh, function. Yeah. Uh, while if they use Python library directly, uh, they, they, they have less control on the efficiency and they might lose uh, efficiency without knowing where it comes from. That's my understanding. Yeah. So probably many of you are arrived to the CMake command. Okay. So be careful to do, do the right CMake command and ask people if it doesn't work. And then you are about to modify the square implementation.cc file that has been generated. Okay. So I just want to mention. So Excuse me, everybody, just five minutes. I, I want to mention that every block has as uh, a method um, uh, as IO signature, je sais plus comment on appelle ça, as, a, as parameter of the, of, the, uh, of the block. And the IO signature is a class. Well, what is not very obvious to understand is that this, so this is the the IO signature block. The IO signature class has two integers, uh, which is the minimum number of streams that you want to put to your block and the maximum number of streams that you want to put to your block. So you remember that some blocks you can have one input or two input or three inputs. So it's, it's a parameter. So you have to indicate it if you are ready to have one input or two input or three input. So in, in that case, we'll have int the mean stream is one and here three. And the, the type of the item that you uh, uh, that are flowing in the stream. Okay, so this is necessary to to uh, to set up in your C code. And for instance, here I'm sorry, it's very small, but I have a DC blocker float float implementation where I have a IO signature. So I always have two IO signature, one for input, one for output. And this is basically what you will do. You have one input. Maximum number of input is one minimum number of input is one because you have only one input same thing for the output and the size of the uh, samples are size of float because you manipulate float samples so this is not very clear in the in the tutorial so what you are the first thing you have to correct in the cc file is the io signature uh, because the GNU radio doesn't know how many uh, input and output you want to set in your blocks 